Welcome back. I'm so chuffed. I um, I just reached a thousand subscribers, so thanks everybody. That's totally amazing, and it's just it's blown my mind. So yeah, happy days. Anyway, today I made a nice leather sheath for a more companion. Although you might notice it's a bit different to normal more. So if you haven't seen how I made the handle. That was my previous video. Today I'm going to be making the sheath. Stay tuned. Alright, so before we get to cutting the leather, we got to make a template for this. So I'll find the easiest thing to do sheet of A4 paper. You fold it from about halfway down. You don't fold the whole thing. You fit the spine of the knife in there. Make sure it's nicely in there. And you just kind of squish it, try not to cut yourself. Right, so now I've got my vague shape of the actual knife. Right, and I've folded it completely in half now. And the reason you don't fold this in half at the start is because you want that to curve around. And if you fold it in half at the start, you don't get that sort of extra stretch here. So, basically, all you do now is you just mark out where the rest of your like sheath is going to go. We got a template. You just need to cut it out. Here we go. Nice sheath template. Get a nice piece of leather. Make sure that it's the inside facing up. You don't want the, you know, the outside facing up. So you mark on the inside. Same with this, because that's the outside that we marked on. So we want the inside. We're just gonna find a nice wee spot. Ballpoint pen, get that knife out of the way so I don't cut myself. I mark the top. I mark the fold line at the back there. So I know where the middle point is, where to fold it. And then I don't mark up here because that's the bit you might be able to see 
inside the sheath. Be out full. Right, this is the belt loop that I'm going to use. I actually bought these at the Bushcraft Show uh, for £1.50. Saves a lot of work. But um, yeah, I'm going to use these. But on my other sheath, if I can find it, there it is. I need to make a little loop to attach it to, so I'm just going to cut a strip of leather the same width as that piece so that it all looks nice. Should be hunky dory. Serious measurements going on here. Cool, and then that's us got our little leather loop. Should hopefully just fit through here. Easy. But this piece that's going to go on is the belt loop. I cut a little V into it. And now the next step is to just thin down. In fact, I'm going to taper it a little bit as well. This bit that folds in. So you don't want any corners sticking out. And when it all squishes down. Very easy to have a little spiky bit sticking out. And by thinning down this piece that folds over, it just means that when you stitch it together like that, you don't have a bump. Because if it's just solid then it doesn't it doesn't blend in nicely. So you don't want to go too thin. We've got just a tiny bit thinner. Down to about one mil. Okay, so once you've got this piece shaped at the bottom, thin down at the top for folding over, you want to attach your loop. If you've made one from scratch, then happy days. Um, you want to make sure that you've got like if you've got rivets, they're sticking out, so when the knife, or sorry, when the sheath is on the belt, it's going to go like that, right? This is going to be attached there. You need to make sure that those rivets will be pointing out, because if you put it on the wrong way around, it'll be looking like that from the outside, and that's just ugly. So we've got that all right. And then I'm just going to use some all-purpose glue. It actually works really well with leather. So, bull glue. I got it out the pound shop. Works great. I don't need to rough these up, see, because this is the in, inner side of the leather. It's already quite rough and quite grippy, so... And this will get stitched as well, so this is just to hold it until it gets stitched. And then I'm going to put it in the vise. You don't want to tighten that up too tight. Because then you'll put dents and stuff in the leather. But just enough to hold it nice and firm until it sets. Time to make a welt. Always try and save as much leather as possible. But I'm also using this side is actually the thicker side. This is an off cut from a big rawhide.
Okay, and then I'll actually just always make a little bump in here for when the you know that little bit that's going to go in there. So I'll try and shape that in. Just like that. Because you don't really need the protection from the blade there. But that just makes it fit nice and snug. And then don't forget, you need to have a hole at the bottom here. So we're going to be cutting that short. And we'll probably trim that down again later because you want to have a hole in the bottom, like this one's kind of closed over, but you need a hole there just to let any moisture, or like if you jump in water or something like that, you don't want your sheath filling up with water and staying full. So that's just a little drain hole. Right, let's cut that out. There we go, and we're not going to glue that on yet because we still need to stitch um, the belt loop on first. The first stage is getting that belt loop on because if you forget that, uh, it just kind of makes everything harder. See there, you can kind of see how everything's going to come together. Should be honky dory. I forgot to mention the smooth side of the leather, you know, the, the skin side. You want to rough that up a bit. I'm just using a steel brush here. There we go. That just means it's nice and nice and rough, ready for the glue. Alright, so our loop's all glued up now, looking good, but it's not stuck on yet. So again, double check. It's going to look like that. I want it to go on the right hand side of my belt. So, loop's going to go just like that. So I'll line it up just there in line with that bit. And away we go. Right, so when it comes to stitching, you don't actually need big needles. It's I think everybody thinks, oh, you need these big fat needles and you shove them through and they, they make the hole. You, you actually make the hole with a punch like this, or you can use an awl. I actually just made this one out of a, a screw. I just cut the back off a screw, put it in a drill bit, and basically sanded it down to a point. So it's... Uh, yeah, it's a spiky thing, you just shove it through. Um, so that's what makes the hole. You actually want a relatively small needle, and the main thing is that you can fit your cord through it. I'm using, this is artificial sinew. It's, it's really, really tough string, and well, it's basically the stuff you use for making like leather work and making sheaths. And it works really, really good. It's kind of waxy, so when it like, knots itself, it doesn't want to come undone, which is really, really handy. And unlike real sinew, when you get to the end, it's, you know, you just tie a little knot and you can just burn it like paracord and it all just melts and locks tight. So that stuff's pretty good and obviously you buy one roll, it's probably going to last you a lifetime unless you're uh, making a business out of this. But yeah, two foot for a little box around there. I'll use the knife. 
and to thread it. I wonder if I can show you on this camera. Okay, so to thread it, what you're going to do is you obviously put it through the eye. And to lock it off, because this stuff's quite thick, you just prick through. There we go. See, so I've just prick. Focus. Come on. There we go, yeah. So I've pricked through the middle there and I've got about a centimeter spare. And you just bring that down to the bottom, pull it all tight, and that's it locked on. And that's how you attach your needle. And it's a needle on both ends. Needles on both sides are ready to stitch. Now just for a little bit of added strength, I am going to put a little bit of glue on here. So I'm just going to have to rough up this side, just rough up that side a little bit. Doesn't need to be a lot of glue, just a wee splodge. Now don't forget, I'm only stitching the top here. Before you stitch the bottom, I'm going to put this piece of leather in here so that there's enough space to fit a belt through there because if you want to put it on your belt and you just stitch it flat, it's going to be really tight under there. So right now I'm just focusing on stitching the top. I'll just put a bit of pressure on that for a minute. Now, everything. Gone and blimmin' hammered it to the table. Ah, there we go. Okay, so that's me got my guide holes. And all we do is stitch it up. You find your middle point. That's about us. And all you do just go through one side and then you go back in the hole that you just came through. You can get fancy and do a little knot, but I'm not going to do that because I find if you start leaving them like this, and then going through the other side and then pulling them both tight that's how you can snap your string because if you accidentally thread the one string through the other bit of thread um, it just causes you a lot of problems so. the other thing I have noticed which I'm not doing right now is if you put on rubber gloves it makes gripping the needle really easy you don't have to use pliers or anything like that So. That's a handy little thing to know. And then just to finish it off, you put one stitch back through so that both your threads are on the inside. And then all you're going to do is just tie it in a normal reef knot. 
All oh, right, over left, left, over right. Pull it nice and tight. Cut them off with a little bit of slack, like a bit, little bit of spare, and then you just burn that with a lighter. And squish it in just the same as what you do with paracord. And that is now absolutely lovely. Alright, so all we need to do now is stitch the bottom bit on exactly the same as the top. Only difference is I'm going to put this piece of leather in there so that when I'm stitching, I end up stitching it with a little gap for putting a belt through there. Because if you just stitch it flat, it does get really tight for trying to fit a belt through there. And that's it. I'll get back to you when I've done that. There we go. That's us got our belt buckle with a little bit of slack and a loop that, to be honest, probably going to use this more than this. I never actually have my, my knife sort of firmly attached. Yeah, it's looking alright so far. Right, next we got to add the welt. So, to do that, Firstly, I'm going to glue it in. So, Splodge that into place. The most important thing is to make sure that it's not an any, because once we've stitched this all together, we're going to cut down here and make it all smooth. But if your welt is inside of the uh, the outside bit, then it just makes it a lot harder because you have to cut in closer to your stitching. But I think that's all good. I'm not actually going to clamp that. I'm just going to leave that for a minute or two just to sort of stick, and then we'll glue this side and actually fold it over and clamp it ready for stitching. <laughs> it's a wonder I've not knocked myself out yet. <laughs> Okay, so that's been about five minutes. That glue's near enough set. Um, next step is just as simple as the previous one. Glue up this side, and then I'm just going to stick it gently in a vise just to um, get it nicely stuck. Now, the reason I do the first side and leave it to set is just so that when you clamp it in the vise it doesn't move because that's the worst thing is if you glue them both stick it all together stick it in the vise and you go to undo it and you see that your welt's actually moved yeah that's game over then Uh, 
as you can see because it's grab adhesive once it's uh, got to that sort of sticky level you can work with it pretty easily that's it pretty much getting stuck so I'm going to just put that in the vise now Just leave that for know, another ten minutes. Crikey's! <laughs> that almost went bad. <laughs> Get your tool. Uh, oh yeah, something I almost forgot. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to put a little rivet through here. These are just the screw thread rivets. I'll put a link in the description where you can buy these. I think I got these on eBay. They're, they're not very expensive, but it's just a little rivet that screws together like that. So I just drill a hole in the top there and that'll just well, basically just put one of them in it. See how even then it's a struggle to get that through. I might even need a bigger drill. But... Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Right, I almost forgot to tell you there. If you happen to have any lock thread, now's a good time to put it on. You don't really need it, but it just means that it definitely won't come undone. Because it is a thread. Just a wee, wee dollop of that. Try not to get it on your thumb. Something you can do, if you don't want to just eyeball it, is just do a little scribe line here. So you start off. It just gives you a nice, nice line to work with. Okay, so that's me punched all my holes all the way down, not too far. It did come loose a little bit, but I'm just going to dub a little bit more glue in there. And then when I stitch it, it'll all come back together again. For the, um, for the main stitching down the side of the sheath, I'm going to use pretty much... But a meter and a half, so if, you know you don't want it to be too long because then it becomes quite hard to work with. But you definitely don't want it to be too short. So if you go with a meter and a half or more, you know you'll be fine. Thread up the needles the same, and you just stitch the same as we did with the other bit, all the way down there. Decided to use the rubber glove. Just makes pulling the needle through a lot easier. Oh, 
Right, so when you get to this last little bit, all I'm going to do is just thread back. Oh, if I can get it through there. There we go. It was a bit harder getting that last one back through. And I've taken my rubber glove off. Right. So you get both both sides back on the sort of side that you can't see. And you just tie them off. And we are getting there, we're almost done now. Cool, so now we've got the stitching all done and it's all looking pretty cool. Just need to clean up this side. So all I do there is I just cut down with a knife because you see the welts kind of sticking out a bit. And that's what you want, you want it to be a little bit proud. You just cut it all down smooth and then I'm going to wet it. Stick the sheath in, like, or, sorry, <laughs> wet it. Then I'm going to stick the knife in, wrapped in cling film, so that the knife doesn't actually get wet. And, uh, and just leave it to sort of wet form and dry. And that should be all good. What better tool to use to trim this than the actual knife itself? got to keep a really close eye on your stitching so you don't end up cutting too close to your stitching. That would be a, a bad thing to do, but just as long as you take off little tiny pieces at a time. Pretty hard to go wrong. Having a really sharp knife also helps. If you've, if you've got a little tool like this, now's the time to use it. It's just a little, um, it kind of carves like a little curve just around the edge here. I'm just going to run it along the edge here. It just makes a nice kind of detail. Alright, so there we have our sheath all finished. And our Mora knife also all finished. And that's basically how you make a nice custom leather sheath for a nice custom Mora knife. Alright, well there we have it. Custom Mora knife, custom Mora sheath. It's as simple as that. So. Um, I would definitely recommend going out and giving it a try. It's not as hard as it looks. Um, you know, what's the worst that happens? You waste a bit of leather and you try again. Uh, my first one, this was my first one. And it, it turned out okay. But this one's better. So, second time's a charm. Um, and again, like I say, I'm not a leather worker. This is my second knife sheath I've ever made. So, you don't have to be a pro or anything like that. And you get a pretty good result. Next step for this is I'm going to wait until the glue is fully dried and then I'm going to soak it in water and just wrap the knife up in cling film, put it in there and just let it sort of dry so you're basically wet forming. So it just stretches the leather out in all the little bulgy places 
and just makes the sheath fit the handle perfectly. And that's the um, yeah, that's the next step. But I can't do that tonight, so and it's not that complicated. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe. And I'll see you for the next one. Thanks. There you go.